Hello everyone, welcome to Forest Focus. A disappointing, if not unexpected, defeat to end a miserable weekend for Nottingham Forest as they lose 3-1 to Tottenham to leave them outside the Premier League relegation zone on goal difference alone. Joining to discuss the game and the fear-inducing fixtures of the weeks ahead are, first of all, Reds fan Chris Aylmer from the Forest All Over podcast. Chris, good to have you with us. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, no, I'm not great. We lost, but um, I think we've enough to stay up and I think we just got to move on now into these final six games and hope for the best. Uh, second guest today, good to have Mark Southerns with us all ev- uh, as ever, especially after some technical difficulties. So good of him to be able to join us. Mark, how are you? Uh, yeah, pretty disappointed with that second half showing. Um, I'm worried about it, to be honest. Um I mean, you can say that was a free hit, but there's no such thing as a free hit when you're in the situation we're in. Um, and, yeah, you know, I'm just concerned at the way we just let it fizzle out and didn't show enough fight, really, against a team that I think if we'd have put them under more pressure in the second half, might have given us opportunities to get something, but wasn't to be. And, yeah, I wasn't particularly happy with the show in the second half. I think that was a frustration for me, Chris. Like we saw in the first half, Forrest did well enough to show that Spurs can buckle under pressure and we create a lot of chances. But by the end of the game, it felt like a bit of a pre-season friendly to me. The atmosphere in the ground was very quiet. And I know I've said this a lot of times, but Spurs didn't have to be at their, their best to beat us. And obviously it's not terminal to our chances by a long shot, but it's just just the way we finish the game. It, it will leave a, a slightly, well, not slightly bit of taste, a, a bitter taste for fans, I guess. Yeah, just really passive, particularly in the second half. The first 20 minutes as well, I, I felt like we invited the pressure and they got their reward spurs because they, they scored from a nothing sort of, well, an overlap chance, which we left left Werner free and then he put the ball across and Murillo scored, but an OG. But I just it just felt passive throughout. I'm annoyed about that. I'm annoyed that we went into the second half, went in, went in the first half at halftime, really... Um, Really positive, actually. I was thinking, right, we're one all. We're in this game. Woods just hit the post. That could have been a momentum swinger in its own right. Um, but then we came out and just let them come on to us again. And I'm not quite sure what the strategy was there. I felt like Yates should have been possibly subbed at half time. Um, let alone because of his yellow card. I felt like he was dragging a little bit. And I just think we need to be more proactive. Uh, in games, particularly when we have them a little bit by the scruff of the neck, because there was a huge momentum swing in the second 20 minutes of that first half. We didn't take advantage of it. And, yeah, I'm just a little bit disappointed. And then, yeah, it's just, I think we'll be all right, but today's just not, it's, it's, it's not good. We just let that game get away from us. I suppose, Mark, the question is, why were we like that second half? Is it an inherent weakness in these players? The just lack of concentration is Nuno at fault for his subs and the way he set us up second half. What I suppose the question is, what went wrong to be like that second half? I don't know. I don't. I don't know whether. I mean, you, you'd like to think that the players didn't have the mentality that oh, they're better than us. We're three one down, so we'll just let this one fizzle out, because we can't afford to be having that kind of mentality. But that's how it looked, and that's how it seemed from. The sidelines as well. There, there had to be some urgency to get back into that game with 25 minutes to go, and it wasn't coming from anywhere on the pitch or off the pitch. And I don't know if that's good enough, is it? Is that good enough? I mean, I know they're a better side than us, but Bournemouth were a better side than Luton, and Luton came back and won that game, having been 1 0 down. So we can't have the mentality of, well, there's 25 minutes to go, we'll just let this one go and we'll fight another day, really. I don't think we can afford to do that. I think we've got to scrap for every single point i mean even man city at home i look at that and think we've got to get we've got to try and get something we can't just go into that thinking oh we're going to lose so far what we'll do we'll just save our energies for the games that follow i don't think we've got that luxury so that just seemed a little bit worrying for me i mean there's always this suggestion that you know do the players because they're all new do they get it do they get what it means to the club to be in the premier league after 23 years and i've always felt well, of course they get it they totally understand Second half, I'm starting to think. Well, is there any, any, is there something in that? Is, do, do they get it, or or what's to, what's the explanation behind just letting letting it go with such a whimper? I don't, I don't really get it. I don't understand it. I hope that's not a sign of a lack of mentality, because if we go three one down at Everton, we're going to have to fight to get a point. If we go three one down at Sheffield United, we have to fight to get three points. So. I don't know. I'm I'm just a little bit worried by what I saw after a really encouraging first half in which we should have gone in 2-1 up. Yeah, I think Chris Mark just hit on the point I was going to raise there at the end where he said, you know, we, we're going to have to go to places and get points. 
and we're going to have to show the, probably the mental resolve as much as anything. When you go to Goodison Park and Chelsea with Bramall Lane, you know, has gone wrong today um, for them. Oh, I think Mark's managed to jump onto his proper setup here. But yeah, uh, I'll add Mark in. But basically, Chris, we're going to have to show a lot more. I don't know. It, is it bottle that we're going to need to deliver or, or what? But we need more, right. basically. It's it's hard to to, to be honest. To say, hey, Mark, good to have you back with the big, big title. Yeah, here we go, for man. Um, it's it's hard to know. I don't know. It's hard to know what the answer is because if you take the last three games in in the last seven days, uh, Palace, Fulham, Spurs, you look at them all like you look at each half individually, and you go the first half against Palace. I don't know what was going on. It felt like the strategy was wrong. And then second half, we were braver and we got our rewards. First half against Fulham, really brave, unbelievable first half of football, 3-0 up. Second half, let them come on to us. But because we didn't concede three and draw three all, we think it's it's all great and dandy. And that was the plan all along. Going to the Spurs game, per first part of the first half, not sure we're there. And then second part of the first half, we are there. It just, I don't know, it's hard to know... Uh, on Mark's point, whether it's the mentality or it's just strategy and it's just things not working because I felt like the first two or three minutes of that second half, we we, we were a little bit on top of them. One, I think we want to throw in in a corner and we were, we were in the mix. But I just think that second half specifically, it felt like we were passive. It felt like we were really passive. And it felt like when we went 3-1 down, even when we went 2-1 down, it felt like we kind of let the game get away from us. And the substitutes that Nuno made certainly suggested that. Like, he took Gibbs White off. I know he might be carrying a slight knock or as he was icing his hamstring on the sideline. But he also took Chris Wood off. So that's our two biggest attacking threats, apart from maybe Alanga. So he took two of our biggest attacking threats off and basically said, right, we're a 3-1. I'm saving these guys for next week. That's what it looked like. Whether mm. he's doing it because of that or not, that is what it looked like. And I just don't know, as Mark said, whether we have the luxury to to, to do that. Um, I was concerned about goal difference as well. I didn't just want to sit off and let them run us down because we're not that far ahead of Luton on goal difference. I think it's four now we were saying before we came on. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know whether it's a mentality thing or not. I just My mind has been battered the last week from a draw, a win and a loss now. I don't know which way to look, but that second half wasn't good enough. Uh, thank you very much to Ian Hopper for becoming a channel member. Appreciate the support, Ian. Um, I feel like we've got the real Mark Southerns back now, so I'll just <laughs> rewind the clock. <laughs> we'll go back to uh, the start of the game and, and team selection and take it a little bit chronologically yeah. from there. Um, I mean, I had no problem with team selection. We'll come on to Yates and Danilo, I'm sure, especially Yates, Mark, but you, I couldn't complain about the team selection. What was your take on it? No, no, it's what we expected, same team. Um only one change on the bench, wasn't there? Ribeiro coming in for Coyote. So, yeah, it's what we expected. And um, we started slow. Um, we got, you know, got caught on an offside. I think, you know, Saar went beyond the line and that that meant that um, Aina, yeah, basically played played work, Werner on side and we got caught on the fire cross. Um, I think that was kind of forgivable, but we got our, our, ourselves back into the game. I thought we would, we were too deep initially. And then second half, we were obviously deep as anything, and, and and very, very happy to just give them, give them that space. Um, but first half, yeah, when we got on top, they looked really jittery and they looked like they were vulnerable. And then obviously, had Wood converted that chance, we will never know what that would what, what that would have meant if we got into one up. Um, had we gone into one up, perhaps that second half showing where we sat back and let them have the ball and say to them, let you know, break us down, that would have made sense. But going in at one all, when we ended the half on top, they would have wanted the, the half-time whistle, not us. I I felt going into the second half, we, we could get something here. We could get at least a point here because they look like that they're quite vulnerable, certainly down the flanks. And, you know, they made two changes at half-time and obviously, you know, Ange addressed it and they got on top and we just rolled over, it seemed. And... <laughs> We surely we can't afford to do that in any game. In every game, for every minute, we've got to look like a team fighting off relegation, haven't we? And isn't that what we've got to be for every minute of every game? A team fighting for our lives now. I, I think we have to be. That's what Luton are. That's what Luton will be. Whether they're three, four, or five on down, they'll fight every minute. Now, people will say that's a free hit and we didn't expect to get anything and it's okay. We've got fixtures to come that are winnable. But it just worries me that the way we looked that second half worries me in the context of what's to come. That's all because we're going to face adversary in matches to come. I'm sure we're going to suffer in matches to come. If we face it in the way we did 
the second half today, I don't think we're going to stay up. Uh, I still think we'll be all right, but I do think you're right about everything you said there. Certainly about not being not being good enough. Um, I think I was. I don't know. Should we be critical of Nuno at half time for not making more proactive changes when we were in a good spot, Chris? Because I thought Yates should have come off, and and Postecoglou, who's probably got a better bench than us, made proactive changes that changed the game. So am I being overly critical there? Would you, would you have hooked Yates, I suppose, is the question, because he was looked like a walking red card to me at that point. Yeah, I would have. I would have. I, I mean, I messaged you at halftime saying the exact same thing. I, I, I think I would have taken him off. I think he's getting caught out a bit as well in midfield at times, and I felt like we needed the energy of someone like Dominguez coming in there. Um, Sangari did reasonably well when he came on, actually. I know the pressure is slightly off because we're 3-1 down at that stage. But, yeah, I would have taken him off. I would have, yeah, definitely. Uh, the yellow card would have been the primary reason because we're one all, we're in the game. We don't need a man sent off and then their crowd gets a lift. And I don't, I, I can't, I'm not like blame, I wouldn't blame Nuno for that because if he leaves him on for another 10 or 15 minutes, Yates fights and then he takes him off at 65. I know he didn't do that. But if he did... Uh, and we're still at one all in the game. I would have been like, okay, now we have fresh legs with 25 minutes to go. So it's kind of all hindsight. Um, but I just don't know. My biggest gripe with Nuno is at 3 1 down, taking off Gibbs White, get it, but taking off Wood and just, it just looked like we sat in and decided, right, we're, we're going to try and press high and get a goal back. But realistically, our two biggest goal threats are off. I don't know what that was. I don't know. It's like Mark said, I don't know. We can't afford to do that. We need everything. And if we got one goal back, even just one goal with 10 mm. minutes to go, 15 minutes to go, Spurs are vulnerable. We know what they're like. They're weak. Their fans suck the air out of the stadium. It's a bit of a library down there, apparently. So we know what they're like. We we could have got at them. And I just, yeah, I, that's what I blame him for is kind of letting it go with 20, 25 minutes to go. And and, and that's, that's what frustrates me the most. But yeah, I would have hooked Yates at halftime, but I don't blame Nuno for it. Um, feel free to weigh in on that, Mark, as well, because Yates did have a bit of a shock in the first 15 mm, minutes, to be fair. Did. But, all, but also, was it, yeah. I suppose, was Rainer the one that should have come on sooner? 20 minutes of Rainer would have been better for me. Yeah, you'd have thought so, wouldn't you? I think, you know, I, I understand why he took Gibbs White off. He's got um, a hamstring problem, maybe. I mean, we saw the ice applied to it, and he had the book in as well. And the last thing you need is him getting a red. I mean, he's on eight red, yellow cards now, so he's only two away from a ban. That's worrying in itself. Um, I mean, just to be clear, when I say that I think we won't stay up, I'm saying if we don't, if we react to adversity like we did today, we won't mm. stay up, right? I think we've got the quality to stay up, and I think there's every chance we will, but it's not going to go like Fulham every game, right? In the Fulham game, we were we were one nil up after ten minutes on top, and we scored a second. Not every game from now to the end of the season is going to go like that. We're going to be behind in matches and we're going to be behind in matches to teams that are playing better than us, like Spurs were today. We've got to fight. <laughs> we got... So I don't I don't know. That that performance in second half was one of a mid-table team seeing out the season, you know, on the beach, wasn't it? Didn't that, didn't that come across to you? And I, I just think that's strange. I, and I don't know where that came from. I don't know collectively whether we felt oh well they're a better side than us and we we've, we've got to conserve energy not get bookings or injuries and just see this one out did we did, did that is that what we decided because obviously the traveling fans wouldn't have wanted that they would have wanted fights at the end and try and get something so i i just don't know i just find that a little bit worrying i, I haven't heard Nuno post-match yet um but i just find that you know we're we're going to be against we're going to suffer in matches to come and we've got to react better than that when we do. Yeah. Like, like I said at the start, it had pre-season vibes for the last, well, certainly from when we went 3-1 down. We didn't offer, did Vicario have a save to make after after we went 3-1 down? I don't think he did, which I didn't, I didn't understand at all because we responded so well to the first goal. I mean, in a sense, Chris, was Chris Wood missing that chance, uh, the key moment and the turning point. And I'm not being critical of Chris Wood because he scored another goal and he's been absolutely outstanding for us. But if that goes in to make it 2-1, would we have gone on to win it or did we always uh, have that kind of second half in us? I don't know if we'd gone on to win it, but we would have got a point most likely. And I think it changes. The the momentum swing would have been massive because Spurs would have been going in at 2-1, half time down. They'd have to come out at us. And then that makes them vulnerable as well. They already play with a high line. So they'd be coming at us 
we'd be sitting back soaking up the pressure probably and breaking with the line and we probably have more space in behind them as a result because they're panicking um and they're two one down uh, yeah i like obviously if we'd scored that i think it would have would have made a massive difference for us but you know i just don't i still think we were on top regardless of that goal I, I, as you said it's not i'm not you're not being critical of chris but i'm not either i think i think he, he hits the post but he does what he can with the reflexes and smashes against the post and it's one of those moments but even the beginning of the second half did he have a chance Am I crazy thinking he had a chance at the beginning of the set? Was it the second yeah, half? Yeah, yeah, he, he had the header from the Aina long throw, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. And, and and that felt that felt like a chance as well because he just couldn't generate the power. But I was like, gosh, you're so close to go. If you generate any power, even not it down off the ground, and I know it was difficult, it wasn't an easy chance, but we, we, that's that's a goal. So it's just those two chances on either side of half time definitely would have made a massive difference. Yeah, but um, I still I don't know. It's hard to know now because. It's hard to know with hindsight because looking at, at what happened in that second half, I just why are we just allowing them to come on to us? Because that's what worked for them in the first 20 minutes. So why when we're one all and we kind of have the momentum even without a second goal, are we just allowing them to come on to us? And yeah, I, I felt like we needed to be a bit more proactive that first 10, 15 minutes of the second half. You should have seen it. You should have seen it a mile away. Spurs were comfortable. They were just passing around the outside of the box waiting for the opening and they got it, so yeah, irritating, yeah. annoying. I, I think we, I think we needed Dominguez's energy in midfield. Mm. Certainly, just before we uh, come on to that, uh, it is drown your sorrows Monday at the Trent Navigation. Uh, if you fancy forgetting <laughs> about today, no, I shouldn't encourage that kind of drinking, but you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, so thanks to Trent Navigation for their support, and of course, don't forget it is the Oasis and gig straight after the Wolves game. So you, it might cheer you up. It might help you forget about it. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I do feel that's a pretty decisive game now, but we'll touch on that before the end. Uh, but it's at 5.30 p.m. Uh, straight after the, the match between Wolves and Forest at the City Ground. Right, so let's talk about the goals that undid us then, Mark. Um, uh, second goal, I mean, I, I've, it's a great strike, but I feel like we should have closed it down more, either Son and Van der Ven. It felt like we were a bit too standoffish there for me. What was your take on it? Yeah, I mean, you're playing against quality players who are capable of pulling out that kind of strike. I didn't expect it from a centre-back, but yeah, when you're allowing them to play it across the edge of the penalty area, eventually a strike's going to come in and, and Sells was un, was unsighted. Let's just give Sells credit because I thought he was outstanding today, probably man of the match for us. And for, without him, it would have been more than 3-1. Um, yeah, I, I think we were too deep. We, we just, we just surrendered at the edge of our box to them, didn't they? And they were passing along the line and Son just prodded it to Van der Ven and he powered it in for a crowd of players. Not a lot the keeper could have done about it. I think we could have got to him sooner and closed him down. I think we were just, we just gave too much space to them on the edge of the box and they've got quality players like Madison and Son who can score from distance. So I don't know. I just, again, I just don't think you can afford to do that. So I don't know why that was the policy. Uh, and then the third goal, again, we just ret retreated too deep and Poro came from the edge of the box and it was in space. I mean, they do flood the box with their fullbacks. We know they get forward a lot. Two quality strikes from two very good players. But I, just, I don't think we did enough to make them difficult, those chances difficult. I think we could have made them harder by closing them down and not retreating as we did. The third goal, I thought, Chris, was terrible. Like, hudson Adoy has probably got to track Poro, and uh, probably Danilo or Yates have got to be in that space as well. You can't have four players ready to score from eight yards out in the Premier League, can you? No, I mean, I think it was a deflected cross that sort of undid everyone. Um, was it Madison that got down the left-hand side and a deflected cross? Was it him? It and Kerr, I think, didn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah and it, it just... Oh, ben and Kerr's shoulder... And then it, it went into the path of Paro. But we know that they overload with Udogi and Paro. We know that. Mm. We knew that going into the game. Why aren't we sort of dragging bodies back to to marshal those areas of the pitch when someone goes wide the other side? It's it's pretty clear, yeah. And and the closing down, it was sort of stop and stare stuff. And I think there was another Spurs player on the overlap ready to hit it as well or just before Paro. So they, they were wide open and we can't allow that to happen. And yeah, it was just... Yeah, it felt like we were a bit shell shocked still from the first goal as well because it was only it was only a few minutes, left, five minutes in between the goal. I don't know, but it just yeah, weak, weak, weak stuff. And you know, I know this isn't 
part of your question, but what bothers me the most is when you have a team like Spurs who overload so much and they play a high line, every time we try to clear the ball, you would think we'd have a man up there somewhere to collect it, bring it down, lay it off, and then take the pressure off us. But we just felt like we were never getting out. For that whole second half, we were never getting out. We could never pick up the ball, pass it to the man. So, yeah, very frustrating. But, yeah, it was clean finish from Paro, but very irritating to leave that open. Very. But we didn't pass through midfield, Mark, as well. I think probably that axis of Yates and Danilo probably sums up a bit to me where we are as a team. Like, really good on Tuesday. Uh, against Fulham, but you know they they didn't play well today, and I'm not even saying you should drop them for the next game because it feels like he they, they might play really well at home, but which is very inconsistent. And perhaps like Prutz was saying on Monday or whenever it was Wednesday, kind of sums up where we are: just a real lack of consistency in our players. Yeah, but to be fair to them, they played against four central midfielders, one set of forty-five, and another set of forty-five. Whereas we left Danilo and Yates on. Uh, until about what? When did Danilo go off? He, he must have played Eight most of the three, game. Yeah, so th- I don't think that Spurs won the midfield battle in the first half. I think we did okay, but clearly, you know, Postecoglou saw the problem and brought on two different central midfield players who just wrestled control, and we just let it happen. We just seemed to just be okay with that, having gone in on top. I don't, I don't know whether Nuno should have reacted. Uh, he should have anticipated that Spurs were going to make changes at half time because it was a poor first half showing, certainly the last 15 minutes. And maybe he should have been more aggressive and made a change at half time as well. Like taking Yates off of Dominguez might have made sense given Yates was on the booking. But I guess, I guess he felt Yates and Delino did, did okay first half. And I think I agree with that. But second half, we just got completely steamrolled and they won the midfield battle. The two that brought on played really well, they controlled the game for them. They got the two goals and then we seemed to be, okay, well, we'll take that. That's how it seemed. And it just seemed a really strange outcome to a match that on 45 minutes looked like it was there. It was it was a possibility we were going to get a point out of a game where going into it, we wouldn't have expected that. I know, I know some, you know, Greg was thinking we could get a win there. I was optimistic we could get something and certainly was at halftime. But I don't know. It just seemed like Spurs were able to wrestle control and we just let them take it. And we didn't do enough, I don't think, to counter that. I think we could have got a point if we played well, but we didn't play well enough for enough of the game. So we can't sit here and say we deserved anything from it because we had 25 good minutes, maybe 35. I don't know, either, you know, either side half time. But other than that, we were we were well on the back foot. I did miss a big talking point that um, people are raising in the comments I see about Madison's punch on Yates and whether Madison should have got sent off. Equally, could Yates have got sent off, Chris, for, you know, he's on a yellow and he's giving it the VAR thing, which is effectively gesturing for disciplinary action against a player. So, do two wrongs cancel each other out there or not? What was your take on that whole affair? I don't think Yates would have got a second yellow just because I just don't, the referee was relatively lenient when it came to things like that. But uh, the Madison incident... I don't know. It's a bit of a conundrum for me. I was watching the game in a pub with a Man United fan next to me and he was saying it wasn't and I was saying it was. And then I was wondering who was bias. I mean, he, he'd want Spurs to lose, but I couldn't, I was confused. I was looking up and going, I'm sure he turned his hand. It's, it, feel, it looked like a very light sort of push or something towards Yates. But if he made a fist at all, surely that has to be looked at. I mean, surely, I don't know. I'd have to see it again up close because I need to know whether he turned his hand and made a fist. He didn't, punch him hard at all like i mean if it, back in the 90s you'd never even give that a yellow but or a second thought but but it it did look like he gestured with his arm and, and went in and that's why yates was calling for it i mean i don't mind yates doing that against against other teams but uh if another player did that against us i'd be calling for their head you know what i mean um yeah i don't know i don't think yates should have got a second yellow for asking for it uh but i don't think i I don't know. I haven't seen enough of it to know whether it was a red card or not, but I think it definitely worth a look because we've seen them given for grabbing someone's throat or even raising a fist or anything. We've seen them given, so it's definitely definitely worth a look. And Manus looked a little bit worried, so I wonder. I wonder is there something in it? I have to see it again. Um, well, for its worth, on Sky at halftime, I know Roy Keane and was it Redknapp both dismissed it. And Keane's Keane never gonna gonna give. Keane basically Keane's, dug Yates Keane's out never gonna give. Him, he went no, down yeah. too easy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to the letter of the law, Mark, he, 
did jab him in the stomach. But if a Forest player got sent off for something like that, I think I'd be pretty annoyed, to be honest. So what was your take on it? Yeah, I, I, I didn't think Sky showed enough of it. We didn't see enough angles of it. And I I don't know whether that was on purpose, or, but I was disappointed. Because in real time, it looked like a punch. It looked like he closed his fist. And then I was waiting for a replay that, to show that, and they never really showed an angle that was clear enough. And I don't know why that was. And it's like, well, yeah, I... I think he, Madison got away with one there, to be honest, because it did look at first hand not like he like he closed his fist and and jabbed him, and then I was yeah the replay that could have showed that never came, and I don't know why that was. Um, I presume VAR looked at it and didn't see that, so it was played on. But I don't know. It was a strange incident, and I was I was expecting more to be made of it than there was at half time, but they dismissed it, and I guess we don't. You know, from a neutral point of view, you don't want to see players sent off for things like that. But from a forest point of view, we would. And I'd I'd have appreciated a better assessment of that than, than we got from Sky. I don't know why that was, wasn't the case, but there you go. I don't think we can bleed about the officials, though. I don't no. I don't I don't think they, they were a cause of us losing the game. No. I'd like to know what VAR's explanation was for it. But yeah, what were you gonna say there, Chris? No, I was just going to say it's a really good point for Mark because that's all I was thinking was where's the close-up angle? Mm. Where is it? And like they've cameras everywhere, so surely it's there somewhere. I'm not saying it's some sort of conspiracy where they shut it down, but uh, where where was it? Because all we could see it was from distance. It looked like he closed his fist, but then also kind of looked like a shove. And Yates did go down easy, but if you're if you get a close-up of that, then you can really see it. And they love to slow these things down. All season they've been doing it when when there's red cards for a twisted ankle or the boot going over the top of the ball. But for a light punch that Madison might have done, not at all. So just that is a really interesting point. There was no angles after that. And yeah. Sort of if you on. sorry, the Danilo tackle second half where he went over the ball, having followed through, they showed yeah. that close up and slowed down several times, <laughs> and yet yeah. we never saw that of the Madison punch, did we? So Spielberg stuff, Spielberg stuff for the Danilo one, it, but for yeah, ours, it's exactly. More of a Forensics were being taken on Dillillo, but nothing. I will just skirt, I'll skirt by the possible England uh, European um, squad member there. there. We'll let we'll let we'll let that one go. Maybe I don't know. Maybe the, maybe I'm being cynical, but I just would have liked to have seen a better angle of it. Yeah, I mean, suppose the question is, was it a punch or just a little push? We're getting to semantics, and I do think you know we can't can't pin this one on the ref certainly. And the Danilo one was nothing. It was a, probably was a. Was a, probably was a booking, but certainly nothing more than that. It didn't warrant more than one replay. You know, he's he's played a pass where he's on the stretch, which means his motion's taking him into the guy, and you can't really mm. uh, avoid that. Um, I mean, Yates got books when he deserved, he deserved that booking, and he can make four fouls in the first 15 minutes. And that's probably why I thought he should have been hooked. But again, there's no reason for the ref to send him off. Uh, the clock is ticking, and Mark's got to go in five minutes. So just quickly, uh, I just want to expand on Matt Sells, Mark. Like Chris said, mm. the whole difference is a factor here, and he's made a great save from Brennan, and he's made a great save from Son, and a good save, was it from Hoiberg as well, I think? He's made three or four really good saves. And yeah. he's, he's, en he's ended the debate for me right now with whether... We need another keeper in the summer. He's been he's been really outstanding since he came in. in January. Yeah, he, he's growing in stature, isn't he? I think we're seeing game to game now that he's um, overall his kicking was was good again. The confidence in the back four having him is there to be seen. He's he's you know he's well out of his area when we're pushing forward, so he's there to recycle the ball when we pass it back. I mean, there's just no there's no anxiety when it goes back to him, and and he's. Just as I say, growing in stature all the time. I think we're okay on set pieces there. I don't think any of them really worried us. I thought it was interesting, and we might see this from teams. Spurs took a lot of them short because obviously they went into the game knowing that we would be wary of corners and and height on corners. So Spurs, I think, probably felt that they'll try a few short ones to test us, change the angle, which was quite a clever tactic. First half didn't quite work. We got we got away with a couple of of kind of instance where we gave him a little bit too much space from the set piece, I thought. Um, but yeah, um, overall, I think Sells and the, and the back four did okay from set pieces. Um, but we were just too deep. We were treated too much in the throughout the game. In the first 15 minutes, showed them too much respect. Then we got on top and then we came out for the second half. Instead of coming out feeling like we could get a grip of the game and really you know, be positive, we surrendered control. And Nuno didn't seem to do anything about it. And no one on the pitch seemed to do anything about it. And that's that's what was annoying. But Sells was outstanding, yeah. Uh, as Paulie says, if you haven't already, do us a favour and hit like. Uh, that would be uh, a, a big help to us. Yeah, we started 
when we started too passive and too back foot again, I, I felt certainly. And there was another thing just before uh, we turned to kind of closing thoughts, Chris. When Nico went off, I didn't realise he got the armband. So there was a real lack of leadership on that pitch by the end. You know, Yates is off, Woods off, Gibbs White's off. I don't know. Is it? A, it's a moot yeah. point, but it's a bit of a concern. It sums up that there's a. Is there a lack yeah. of character in the team or lack of characters? I don't know. We're just still such a mix mash of players. You know, it's, it's, it's with all the influx of players that we've had, we we just are. And uh, it's not for me. It wasn't a question of leadership. I I think you know. It just felt like we drifted out of the game and we'd given in and there was no one on there driving us on. And if you have Yates and you have Gibbs White and you have Neko on the pitch, they would do that. Um, at that point, give it to Matt Sells. It's such a good game. Uh, and and he's leading from the back. But I don't know. You have two 21-year-old centre-backs as well. You know, are you going to give it to one of them? I, I, I don't know. I just I felt like we'd let go at that point and submit it to what mm. was going to happen to the result. And that that's the most disappointing thing for me. Whether there's leaders on the pitch or not, none of those players should be doing that. None of them. Not 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 with two minutes to go, not in six minutes injury time. Never. And I felt like we, we allowed that to happen. I felt like Nuno kind of allowed that to happen, particularly the last 30 minutes um, with, with, with his changes and his decisions. But look, I'm not going to blame Nuno. I just, yeah. It felt like a lack of leadership all around, all over the pitch, second half. Mm, I do think Sells was uh, Strasbourg captain, wasn't he? Before he yeah, came there. I might be wrong about that. No, uh, he Mark, was. Yeah. You've, got to, you've got to go in two minutes. So I'll uh, I'll come back to Chris with a few more thoughts, but give us your thoughts now. Uh, you know, you've had 30 minutes of catharsis to talk about this. How how are you feeling now about the, the big thing yeah. into the Wolves? I just, like, I don't think we will stay up or not based on spirit and fight i hopefully will stay up on based on quality right because i think if that's the case we'll be okay but if it does come down to character and fight what i saw today was worrying that's all i'm saying because we're going to go to everton and we're going to go to sheffield united and and arguably we've got more quality on the pitch than both those teams but we've got we've got to not lose those games and in fact with sheffield united we've probably got to win it so if everything goes our way in those games we should be okay. But if it doesn't, we're going to need to show a lot more than we did second half today. We're going to need to show that we can come through adversity and still get something from the game. And that's what worries me because I think Everton is going to be a really tough place to go. They're going to make it a fortress. They're going to have blue smoke to welcome the coach. It's going to be a horrible kind of, yeah, partisan atmosphere at Goodison Park. If we go one down in that game, Someone on the pitch or someone on the side of the pitch has got to get us up to fight back and get something from the match. Same with Sheffield United. They're going to, they would love to be, even if they're down, they're going to love to beat us or take, take points off us. And that's going to be a scrap as we know, because we've been there not long ago. So I just, it just worries me a bit the way we rolled over and I didn't see any fight on the pitch and I didn't see any fight coming from the side of the pitch either. It, it just seemed like we, we were content with just minimising the damage and fighting another day. I don't know if that was a valid thing to do, given where we are. And I hope that we're saving our fight and character for another day. Or maybe I hope that quality wins out and we don't need to show it. But it's just worrying, that's all. Yeah, I think the Wolves game's massive. I need to check their injury news, but I know Aiton Rory went off. And I think if Dawson's back and I know Cunha's back and Wang Yi Chan, then it's going to be a tough one, obviously, and it's going to be decisive, I think. Because obviously Luton have got Man City the same day, so if we can get a yeah. win there, then we'll be having a you know much more upbeat conversation. Uh, Mark, we'll let you go. Thanks for joining us. I know you've got to depart, but we'll uh, catch you again soon. Is Mark frozen? Just at the Is most opportune time. Oh, um, lost my. He's back. He's back. You're back. I lost my internet connection there. Sorry, Matt. Well, it was only me saying goodbye. So oh, don't okay. Worry. <laughs> no, I, I can hold on for another five minutes. It's all good. So I'll see you at the end of the show. It's all good. Nice. Okay. Um, well, just, yeah, I, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, Nico had a rough game. Uh, and I'll probably elaborate on that tomorrow, actually, because I want to just close with Chris's final thoughts as well. And then we'll kick it back about. Uh, how are you feeling about where we're at, Chris? I just think on the face of us, if we look at the fixtures, Luton have Man City away, Brentford at home, Wolves away, Everton at home, West Ham away. Fulham at home. We have Wolves at home, Everton away, City at home, Sheffield United away, 
Chelsea at home, Burnley away. They have more favourable home fixtures. We have more favourable away fixtures. We both play City. We play them at home. They play them away. Realistically, City should probably win both those games. We got something last year, and hopefully we do again, and it's at the City ground. But realistically, we have similar fixtures. It's just we have the easier away games. They have the easier home games. So it's going to come down to our way form. And the only thing I'll say is next week they play City. I'd be shocked. Shocked. I shouldn't say that now because obviously anyone can get anything from anywhere. But I'd be shocked if City didn't didn't beat them and beat them well and, and helped us with goal difference. If we beat Wolves next week, we're then technically two games away from them because we're three points clear and we'll have the better goal difference by quite a stretch at that stage, I imagine, because City would have beaten them. That going into the final five games, I think, will be enough. If we beat Wolves next week and they lose to Man City, I think that we will stay up. So it is a massive game next week. It's absolutely huge. And I'm not trying to be dramatic or too literal with it, but I genuinely believe if we beat Wolves next week, we stay up. And if we don't, it's all about away form. And we're going to have to fight like we did against Newcastle and get some stuff away from home at Sheffield United, uh, Burnley, and is it Everton? So, yeah. It's all down to that. Chelsea, we could get some points from at home as well. They don't look great. I mean, they're having a terrible season. They're a disgrace. But, uh, yeah, it's going to come down to away form if we don't win next week. But if we win next week, I think we survive. That's my uh, Yeah, just, just to <laughs> elaborate on a couple of bits there. Uh, Chelsea, I didn't watch the game, obviously, but I saw some stats. Like Dreadful. Chelsea were mm. awful against Sheffield United by the sound of it today. So they shouldn't hold any fear for us. Uh, a few people said in the comments, and I think they're right, like, Everton v Burnley was an absolutely abysmal game of football. I think we've got better players, but we know Mm. what Everton will do and we can (laughs) stand up to it at the city ground. So can we go, if we go there and it comes down to carriage and we show it, then I think we can certainly avoid defeat. And one other factor, Mark, and we shouldn't talk about this as a, as a positive, but Everton have got a points deduction probably coming and it probably throws them in the mix. I haven't actually, I haven't checked the table. I know Brentford have got these games where if they lose, they get dragged in. Is it still, uh, I, I don't know. I'm just looking, not saying it's definitely just us and Luton. I just feel Everton are going to be a factor, but you don't think that, do you? No, I, I don't want to think about the points deduction, really. I mean, three points ahead of us now. We've got to go to Goodison Park and not lose. We've got to go to Sheffield United and not lose. And we've got to go to Burnley and not lose. That If we get three points in those and we beat Wolves, I think Chris is right. That might be enough. But, Luton can beat Brentford at home and Luton can beat Everton at home. I I believe that now because I watched them beat Bournemouth. And now they were one down and Bournemouth were much the better side, but they hauled themselves back into it with just sheer fight and determination. Not quality because, I mean, it was a good quality finish for the first goal, but that was from a defensive error. And then, yeah, just volume of crosses into the box and Morris outmuscled them and they scored the winner. What I saw from them was that team can beat Brentford and that team can beat Everton. So it worries me that they can get six more points, which means we've got to get six more points. And I see it as we've got to beat Wolves and we've got to avoid defeat in those three away games. I think we can do it. I think we can do it. I absolutely think we can do it. But I worry that if things don't go away in those games, that we'll fold like we did today. Hopefully not. Hopefully it was just... Nuno and the team thinking, well, they're a better side than us. Let's conserve ourselves. Maybe that was it. Maybe it was all about management of of legs, injuries, suspensions. But it, it, I think the away fans, our Forest fans, would have come away from the ground as disappointed as I am and feeling a little bit flat about what we showed second half, having looked so promising first half. I'm still optimistic we can do it. But like Forest always do, they're going to make us, make us be anxious right to the last, aren't they? I think they might. I think they might. A few people rightly say in the comments, well, I mean, Palace have got tough fixtures and they've not had any kind of new manager bounce, but they don't need many more points. They probably only five, need one win, yeah, I would think. Five clear of us anyway. Yeah. But they're, and Ali- they're Ali- Alise back, back as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah Alise is a good shout, yeah. yeah. And, and they've got, like, Mateta's in a bit of form. They'll get Gahey back. So, yeah, I know they're not playing well, but I think one more win would, would that put them on... 30 points or something? Yeah. 33. That would put them on 33, wouldn't it? So, yeah, or yeah. say one win in the draw or something. I think 34 points will be enough for them. But, yeah, we'll see. Right. Uh, just a quick word to mention as well. Uh, I know it's mentioned the Sky passing, uh, commentary about the passing of Joe Kinnear. 
sad loss to football. Obviously, I know he was a bad manager for us, but uh, a good servant to the game. So I thought we should uh, reference that. Uh, Chris, any quick final words before we depart? Feel free to plug your podcast. Oh, no. Yeah, Forest All Over podcast. It's um, either two best friends who hate each other but love Forest, or it's Forest All Over the World fans coming on to to chat from different parts of the world. And we've had quite a few on lately. We had Mark from Australia on last week. That was cool. Um, so check it out if if you want. Um, no real final thoughts. Uh, Joe Kinnear passing is sad. Obviously played for Ireland. Um, was always linked with the Irish managerial job for years. Uh, I know he wasn't great with Forrest, but yeah, um, that is sad. So rest in peace. Um, and yeah, as far as Forrest goes and today and how I'm feeling, you know, it, it just, it, we, we have a massive week ahead of us. Every game feels like it's the last game on earth, particularly the Palace game and the Wolves game, or sorry, the, the Fulham game and now, and now this. But, you know, I just, I really, really hope that we can just drag ourselves into the mix a little bit more um, and get in amongst Brentford and Everton again so we can feel less angst because it just feels like a shootout between us and Luton at the moment. And as Mark said, they seem like they have a lot of fight in them. Today, we didn't show it. But that Wolves game next week is massive. It's another biggest game of the season. And uh, I do believe if we win that, we we, we can close it out. But um, yeah, I, I just, this season's just been mad, hasn't it? It's just been absolutely bonkers. So um, yeah, final thoughts. Fingers crossed. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Mark, I've kept you for uh, over seven minutes more than I was supposed to. That's all I'll good. Offer you, I'll offer you any final words, and then I'll then I'll leave. Yeah, I, I just I just need to get over today. I mean, like I said, if we'd have got a point, I'd have been absolutely over the moon. So perhaps you know, I didn't expect too much from the game. I just felt disappointed having watched the first forty-five. I've I've said it so many times already tonight. I'm not going to go on about it. So we've got to we've got to recover. I'll listen to the post match to see what Nuno says. Let's see if he's got explanation for it. Um. And then, yeah, Wolves is going to be huge. I'm, I'm going to be there. I'm, I'm already feeling sick about it. I'm going to be very, very nervous come Thursday, Friday. Um, I'm probably going to be in pieces at the, at the, at the first whistle on, on Saturday for that game. So, yeah, I think, I think our season and our, our Premier League future depends on us getting three points. I really do. I think if we don't win that, we're in really serious trouble. So. But we've got the quality to beat them. They've got injury worries. I don't think they'll have a fully fit 11 out. Um, we should have. And um, we've got every chance of winning that game with the crowd behind us. And so I've got to be one of those voices that cheer us to three points on Saturday. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I'll be there as well. I found the tension before the Palace game unbearable. So I'll be the same as Mark from kickoff. I went, yeah, God, they'd be able to breathe actually. But yeah, yeah that's a thought for another day. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, I don't know who with and I don't know who, uh, at what time. It's been an absolute nightmare trying to organise it, frankly. But we'll be around at some point tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, thanks for all your company today. 500 people with us, which is great. Uh, good to have you all in the comments. Chris, thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Um, it's been a wild week. You know, a draw, a win and a loss. Um, but if we can keep that that sort of weird form up for the rest of the season to draw a win and a loss will probably stay up. Um, so fingers crossed we beat Wolves and thanks everyone. Uh, chin up for the week. We'll beat Wolves next week. You've said fingers crossed too many times, but <laughs> it's where we're at. Mark, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. It's a roller coaster, isn't it? That's what we expected. Um, you know, I hoped it would be smoother, but it's not going to be. Um, today was a down. Let's hope Saturday's a big up. And I don't want it to come down to fingers crossed, but uh, maybe it will be that. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Chris. Thanks very much, everyone. And like I said, at some point, we shall see you tomorrow. But in the meantime, have a good evening. And uh, now I have to say, we shall see you soon. <laughs>